So, that was a big night. No, not because Kat finally finished her Snoopy jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Good job, Kat. See, a little perseverance can pay off. Wow. That went over well. <laughs> All right. But also, the election. For the latest election count, let's go to our map. <laughs> ah, sorry about that. Let's go to the real map. <laughs> That's not wrong, it's just incomplete. Here's the actual map. <laughs> Finally, an accurate count. No fraud in that one, for sure. Like they say, Virginia is for lovers. But what an amazing message sent by American voters. By now, you've heard the explanations. Parents had enough of destructive, racist wokeism, the involuntary indoctrination of their kids, the ideological, robotic brainwash forced in all facets of their lives. Not to mention Terry McAuliffe's robotic dancing. Thank you, God bless you, and let's go on and forth. Three point two from the driveway of my house. Mm, my God. <laughs> Someone please check Terry's medications. He has moves like Jagger, if Mick were having a series of strokes. He makes Al Gore look like Jennifer Lopez, except instead of having a big ass, he is one. I haven't seen dance moves like this since Kat dropped a lit joint on her own lap. <laughs> but thankfully, parents were basically the opposite of Brian Stelter at a buffet. They were people who had enough. <laughs> they were like Harrison Ford in the movie Witness, a cop undercover as a pacifist Amish farmer, only to be taunted repeatedly by a guy who goes one step too far. Oh. <laughs> You're making a mistake. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Boo. Oh. Oh, I love that scene. That was America doing the punching, and that guy being punched, everything woke that's been shoved down our throats. But my favorite part of last night, other than the magic mushrooms and the Merlot, the joy from watching that incoherent word regurgitator over at MSNBC collapse into a heap of nonsensical verbal puke. I watched Glenn Youngkin's interviews on Fox News, and he did nothing that Claire's... He did not... I mean, he worshipped at the altar of Donald Trump on Fox News. He flew an insurrection flag at his rallies. He simply didn't... He played dumb about a, 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 a Zoom rally. He did not really put much distance between himself and Donald Trump on the big lie or the deadly insurrection in which police officers were maimed by flagpoles. So I think that the, the real ominous thing is that critical race theory, which isn't real, turned the suburbs 15 points. Oh, wow, yeah. CRT isn't real, and weapons of mass destruction was. How glorious was that implosion? It was like watching Michael Jackson set his own hair on fire. Insurrection flags, no such thing as CRT. She's blurting out talking points like a malfunctioning Stepford wife. If she got any more miserable, she'd be these low brain dipwads. This is now, I think, also the Republican playbook is, is to use these issues to scare people, basically, um, a, a feeling out of control, you know, that, that everything's out of control with their children and they need to be protected from these people with this uh, demagogues and this agenda, right? Yeah, sure. I, let's be clear. Some of it was dog whistle. Yeah. Right? Some of it was uh, ra dog whistle racism. A thousand but percent. She took her. <laughs> Took her two times to figure it out. So what happened to these two? I mean, McAuliffe might be breakdancing, but these people are broken. It's hilarious. Powers is trying to sell a book called Grace while she sells lies about race. She really should get rid of the G in the title if she's that desperate for relevance. As for Brianna, stick to what you do best, eating insects. Are you ready? Cheers. Actually, I'm yeah. less scared of this. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh the crunch. Mm. Do I have a wing hanging out of my mouth? Mm. You should. Yeah, she went from eating cicadas to eating crow. At this rate, she'll be snacking out of Brian Stelter's garbage can. <laughs> That's not a euphemism. <laughs> but you see the grift. If you win, it's about racism. If you lose, it's about racism. And for CNN, it boils down to denial. They deny that their obvious bitter loathing for most of America spells their doom. But don't feel bad for these losers. They relied on sex pest scumquats over at the Lincoln Project for commentary, <laughs> whose despicable hoax of portraying parents as racist blew up in their ugly faces. 
And now they're the ones in soot covered blackface. Fact is, the only expertise Lincoln Project has is knowing the best place to watch boys' soccer practice. <laughs> to read up on that. <laughs> Speaking of perv enablers, where is Rick Wilson or John Weaver or Steve Schmidt? Boy, do they go silent. Somebody better remove their shoelaces. They're as done as a bag of microwave popcorn cooked on high for 45 minutes, and they deserve it. After creating that Tiki Torch hoax, which was meant to destroy Yunkin, but instead destroying the lives of a few stupid Democrat operatives, they should be shunned for life. To call them scum is an insult to everything currently living on the rim of a public toilet. No offense, Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> now, you keep hearing the phrase bellwether, that this election was a canary in a coal mine. But in reality, we were the canary. For a year, we were chirping to anyone who listened that wokeism was racism in drag, and it would ultimately drag the terrified Democrats into the abyss. But the Dems don't watch this show. If they did, they could have seen this coming. Now they're as screwed as a $12 hooker leaving Hunter's room at the Motel 6. <laughs> Why do cheap hooker lines always work? <laughs> Instead, they listen to the clueless creeps at CNN and MSNBC. And now you see those dopes finally coming to grips with their own dopiness. They're dummy come latelys. You know, the debate is, among Democrats tomorrow is going to be, you know, the same debate that, that has been had now for forever. <laughs> the liberal wing is going to say, well, you see what happens when we backtrack no, it will from be. And, our, and it's our a, principles, it's, and the moderators are going to say, they're, we're just, they're, it's, it's too far it's, to the it's, left. It's a, it's a tedious debate. The Democrats are going to have to come face to face with this issue of wokeism. You have a lot of people saying, oh, he won based on something that's not real, that doesn't exist. Uh, CRT or wokeism or whatever you want to call it, I can tell you. I mean, that's all parents talk. Mm. Well, their story changed faster than Biden in a Vatican bathroom after his little accident. Because <laughs> it's a rumor that he pooped himself. Probably didn't happen, but the joke still works. <laughs> it's funny, if we had said any of that three weeks ago, those chumps would have called us racist. But now they know they've been on the wrong horse, or should I say horse's ass. At this rate, they'll be approaching reality by 2044 when Baron Trump finishes his second term. <laughs> Finally, let's salute a real groundbreaker, Winsome Sears, the first woman of color to win a Virginia statewide election. <laughs> And she did it as a Republican. I'm telling you that what you are looking at is the American dream. The American dream. I am not even first generation American. When I joined the Marine Corps, I was still a Jamaican. But this country had done so much for me, I was willing, willing, to die for this country. USA! 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 <laughs> Jamaican me hot. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Anyway, she is living proof, but you didn't hear about it on The View, on CNN or MSNBC, and why? Would it be because she's a Republican? Well, that's half of it. The other half, she was black. Fact is, the true racists prefer their people of color to follow one set of beliefs. You leave that plantation and you're dead to their masters on cable news, which is the real story of this election. It exposed who the real racists are. And as predicted here on Monday, last night they got their tiki torches shoved right up their butts. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's a killer comedian. Literally, he moved to Alaska and killed his career. Comedian, writer, and actor, Jamie LaSalle. The only beard in his life is the beard on his face. Outspoken editor-in-chief and contributing editor to The Spectator, Chadwick Moore. He's conquered books, TV, and podcasts. And next year, he takes on puberty. The Guy Benson Show host and Fox's contributor, Guy Benson. And she's like a remote. Hard to operate, too many buttons, and you keep finding her under the couch. Fox's contributor, Kat Tim.
Jamie, how's it going? It's going great. How's Alaska? Alaska's great. Uh, it's dark. It's getting dark right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, um, it's dark. That's where you see movies where it's dark like 24 hours a day and all that stuff. And it's awful. And people go, yeah, but isn't it beautiful? And I go, I don't know. It's dark. <laughs> <laughs> has it changed you at all? I think it has changed me. You know, I feel like I'm a little bit tougher. Yes. You know, I'm a little bit tougher. And yeah, like how that. so? Uh, just, dude, I, well, can I bring this back to Sears? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you see the picture of her on Instagram? With the machine gun. With the, the machine the, gun? The, uh, the, it was the AK, I don't know what it was. I think it was, an, it was a gun we don't know. <laughs> and, uh, but I saw that, I don't know if these guys saw it, but dude, there's, I saw this picture of Sears holding this machine gun AK-47. I was like, oh, I cannot wait for the new Tarantino movie to come out. <laughs> this is going to be good. But dude, everyone makes excuses, but it's yes. like the reason things are turning the way they are is people are tired of everything, right? We're right. tired of all this stuff. We're right. Thanks for the one clap. <laughs> the, um, no, I honestly thought it only deserved one. But because like, the the protocols and it ruined everything. You know, it ruined comedy. Yes. Like comedy was screwed. And even when we had shows, they were weird. Like I went to a show once, and the performer on stage wore a mask mm -hmm. the entire Ooh. time he was on stage. Yeah, and it just kind of ruined it. You know, he was a ventriloquist. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> or was he? <laughs> oh, that was a two-parter. <laughs> yeah. Since I moved to Alaska, I got all two-parters. <laughs> yes. you, got a lot, you got a lot of time in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Guy, uh, what do you do? You think the Democrats learned any lessons from your keen mind? <laughs> I think some of them who are more rational and interested in winning mm -hmm. might learn some lessons, but their base, right, the activist class on Twitter, yeah. the people on MSNBC and CNN, most of them are not learning anything. They are doubling and tripling down on mm -hmm. calling everyone stupid, ignorant, manipulated by misinformation, and racist. Right. And it worked out so well for them last night, I hope they go with that for the next year. I would yeah. welcome that. I actually live in Virginia. I voted excitedly for this ticket. Republicans had not won any statewide races for 12 years in Virginia. Then they swept last night. And I will say to your monologue, I didn't think that Glenn Youngkin had this in him because he's sort of like this earnest suburban right. dad type guy in his vest. Mm -hmm. He sent, I, I read this today, he sent a fruit basket and thank you note to the Lincoln Project. <laughs> it was a troll of the trolls, and I applaud him. That is a good move. God knows what they did to that fruit. <laughs> I can think of a few things. Chadwick, how you doing over there? I'm great, sir. How are you? I am fantastic. Great. What did you think of last night? What were your thoughts? Well, two questions. Are, what is an insurrectionist flag? Yes. <laughs> did anyone catch what that is? Uh, yes. Um, the dog whistle, if America, we're told America is such a hateful, racist, awful country, so racist, you've got to send your racism in Morse code, apparently, <laughs> yes. with these dog whistles that nobody knows what they're talking about. Yes. My big take, though, is that this was not a referendum on critical race theory. I don't think that, you know, Susie Jenkins with her three kids in the suburbs in Virginia still even knows what it is. Right. I think, and I think the reason why the liberal media is focusing on that is because it was actually on COVID, COVID mandates, COVID panics, especially where it relates to the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that a bunch of parents were... Uh, pissed off that their kids were home for a year and right. wanted revenge. Mm -hmm. uh, the masking of the kids, the mandates, all that. But I don't think CNN can talk about that because they still need the COVID panic. The of the kids sounds so <laughs> the horrible, <mask. laughs> but it's real. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it, it is interesting, uh, Kat. All of these things kind of came together, and it seems like the Dems are on the wrong side of everything, but they can't. They can't admit it. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to say that telling parents they should not raise their kids and that school should be government indoctrination camps had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the exit polls, they said, you know, it was economy was the top issue. And you saw the Gallup said 52 percent think that government's doing too much. So it's pretty clear people want smaller government. So, of course, they're going to keep losing if they're, what they look at and they see. Well, obviously, it's because they were being racist and America's mostly racist. I mean, it's hard to, I don't know if they actually think that or not, because there's no evidence of that. Yeah, no, I think it's. I think what happens is it is now just doctrine, and they have to, and they can't let go of it. It's it's part of their system, and it's going to ruin the party yeah. unless somebody and somebody pulls the plug. But I don't see it. I think they're just they're 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 barreling towards the abyss, and I couldn't be happier. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.